Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Another day, another installment in the Russian election soap opera. This one, an unexpected plot twist. Earlier today, Donald Trump Jr. released an email exchange he had last summer with an English publicist named Ron Goldstone. Now, Goldstone had offered Trump a meeting with a Russian lawyer called Natalia Veselnitskaya. Pronounced that twice. He claimed she had incriminating information about Hillary Clinton's dealings with Russia. Now, Don Trump took the bait and met with Veselnitskaya some weeks later, though he complained later that she had nothing interesting to say during the meeting and instead just talked about Russian adoption law. Goldstone, meanwhile, emailed Trump Jr. to claim, without offering any evidence to support it, that the Russian government supported his father, Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Now, Don Trump released all those emails a little before noon today, and within minutes, the Congressional Treason Caucus swung into action to accuse Donald Trump Jr. of betraying his country. We're now beyond obstruction of justice in terms of what's being investigated. This is moving into perjury, false statements, uh, and even into potentially treason. So according to a sitting member of Congress, gossiping with foreigners now qualifies as treason in America, even if no meaningful information is exchanged. You ought to consider that before you allow an exchange student to live in your house. It could be a bigger risk than you think. Later tonight, Donald Trump Jr. will be going on Sean Hannity's show to explain his side of things. Honestly, my takeaway when all of this was going on is that someone has information on our opponent. You know, things are going a million miles an hour. You know what it's like to be on a campaign. We just won Indiana, but we're talking about a contested convention. Things are going a million miles an hour again. And, hey, wait a minute. I've heard about all these things, but maybe this is something. I should hear him out. Did you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing. There was nothing to tell. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. Now, that full interview airs just ahead at 10, and you can decide for yourself what you think. But before then, consider what we know now, what Donald Trump Jr. did. A publicist emailed him to say his client had damaging information about a political opponent. Trump met with the client. Apparently, he learned nothing during that meeting. For that, he's an enemy of the state guilty of a capital crime. Now, if that is true, we've reached a new level of hysteria that could be dangerous to an awful lot of people and not just the Trump family. How many lobbyists in Washington routinely meet with foreign agents who are seeking to influence American policy? Well, most of them, probably. It's going on right now as we speak in dozens of restaurants in D.C., literally all over the city, because that's standard here and has been for a long time. And yet by these new standards, all of those people are now facing the possibility of lethal injection. They ought to be worried about that. But here's the most interesting thing about today's story. What was the damaging information this publicist offered Don Trump Jr. about Hillary Clinton? Well, according to the email we saw today, it was, we're quoting, official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia. In an interview today, the Russian lawyer in question says the only question she got from Donald Trump Jr. during that meeting was whether the DNC had received illegal funding from Russia. Huh. So in other words, the Trump people believed the Hillary people were colluding with Russia. Meanwhile, of course, the Hillary people thought that the Trump people were doing the same thing. So each side believed the other was in bed with Vladimir Putin. It's like a comedy sketch. It would be funny, actually, if Democrats weren't suddenly talking about death penalty offenses.